I'm Eric, call sign N1JUR, and today we are going to dive into a new device I just picked up. As I was in a recent uh, Facebook group for the FT891, and I had a few folks post about this little device. They were curious to see if anybody's tried it or set it up with their 891 and, and gotten it to work. Uh, as what I found, and they as well, uh, there's not much in terms of information out there on this and whether or not uh, it's actually going to work with FT8. So I grabbed one off of Amazon, and I'm going to throw it on the bench over here, hook it up to the 891, and we are going to put it through its paces to see whether or not it actually can solve our digital problem with Bluetooth to a laptop or maybe uh, your smartphone. So come with me. All right, we're over here on the bench here. And so I've already taken this out of the package and looking at the configuration, you've got the cat control with USB B. You've got two ports here for obviously the data side or audio. And then you've got this additional port here, which on the 891, if we know that, that that's basically your amplifier and a few other, you know, kind of controls. Uh, and then you got a ground uh, lug here. And really the only other things that you see on here are the LED lights here, which the fact that it didn't come with a manual and didn't really describe what the light combinations are, I kind of had to guess and figure out what the best approach is for it. So um, what you do is, um, and I've had to do this by trial and error, is I'm assuming this is a pass-through here. So uh, for the device, for the where I'm pulling the power and pulling the audio from for being able to send uh, <clears throat> cat over serial or uh, audio over Bluetooth to the uh, radio so we can transmit um, and key the PTT is through this port. Um, this one here, I assume, is just a pass-through here. So if you wanted to add your amplifiers or whatever else, uh, through that that that's what the, this is built for um, so back to the switch um, I in my testing my best way to be able to get the, the Bluetooth device to sync up with the phone is to obviously leave this off before you uh, connect uh, any of the devices and power up the radio so what we'll do next is connect it to the radio here and it's really just as simple as taking off the ground uh, screw and then align the pins to the back of the radio and it fits pretty snugly. Uh, the design and the configuration of it, um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Although when you remove this on an awful lot, I'm finding that the case itself uh, can sometimes want to separate from the actual PCB board. So uh, take care in trying to pry it up. But yeah, you're going to have to remove your ground lug screw um, and then basically tighten that down to it uh, as I uh, figure that the ground or the, the, the completion of the circuits and whatever it uses off that uh, screw there because it uh, mounts pretty well. Couple of things. Um, you don't have to feed audio into any of this. My only problem is, is that depending on what type of connectors you have when you attach your coax, the space between here and the coax connector itself is a little tough. So if you're running rails like I am, and I'm running the uh, the zero rails, the metal ones uh, on my 891, that um, you'll find putting and taking off this connector itself can be a little bit of a challenge. It, it, it's definitely, you know, there's not a lot of space to get your fat fingers in there if you have fat fingers like myself. So just keep that in mind uh, that you might actually have to take this off to get the connector off. So let's uh, continue to hook this up here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, attach my coax here. And 
like I said, it's usually best that, uh, you know, you try to work <laughs> the coax on there as quickly as you can or put it on before you put the connector on uh, as tightening it up uh, can always be a challenge. Um, and so then let's just hook up the battery here. Okay. All right, so we got the my 20 amp hour battery here. Now, currently, um, if we look, and I'm going to try to do this as an aerial shot. Right now, it's currently off, so you're seeing absolutely none of the Bluetooth connectivity uh, on. And so I also have the radio off, too, as well. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to turn the radio on. Uh, and you can probably see just some of the glow here for the bottom of the radio. Let me actually just turn the volume down there so we don't have to hear any EFT squeals. Um, what you'll see is that once you flip the switch on, it's going to power on green. And then it's going to send a Bluetooth signal or a, a connect signal to whatever device that might be listening. And so if we go over to the phone here, and again, this is just my Galaxy. I am an Apple user, so uh, trying to get this to... Uh, work with an iPhone is going to be nearly impossible. So what you will need to do is uh, fire up uh, FT8CN and in it, um, if the device is already configured, uh, you would normally uh, just go in to the settings here and by default that for some reason FT8CN on this phone does not want to save any of that stuff. You'll see um, the device here show up as the JY B audio uh, device and you're just going to select that from the list and at that point uh, you'll see all of it start going through the connect process here and now you're connected to the radio and so you'll see the radio lights here now are solid green um, and I don't know what the other two lights are except for one probably being power the green probably means that there's a connection an active connection there and then you've got a, a Bluetooth kind of activity light all right so there's the setting of the the radio and how you set it up it from a standpoint of it working well here's the audio level and i'm on 20 meters now i am not going to go over in detail with this the settings for ft8 for an 891 there's plenty of and articles uh, on how to set it up with the digi rig this i normally run with a digi rig 891 so all of my settings are set for the radio and i assume are going to work across the board they work perfectly fine for uh ft8cn and selecting uh what you needed so um here in audio signals here i've got uh, my width set properly everything's good on the radio side and and so you'll see that uh as we continue to uh just sit here and go through cycles that it is actually hearing over the Bluetooth connection um, stations. And so this is kind of where this and the Bluetooth device can get a little hairy. I found um, that you're going to have to go into the settings menu a lot to kind of tweak and get it working as it needs to be set up for an 891 or your radio. Um, and again, because we're just doing this as 891, um, I will post all the settings uh, in the show notes uh, description below. Uh, so you can take a look at that to match uh, your settings for FT8CN. Um, but we are about halfway there. I'd say, you know, if I'm able to decode, I'm able to receive from the radio over Bluetooth, it is working. Um, I'd say we're almost successful. However, uh, let me say that, you know, in terms of understanding FT8CN, I am still getting my head wrapped around it. I, you know, I am in the IT industry and I love really good design software. FT8CN, nothing, no slam against the developer, but it, it is a hot garbage in my mind. And the reason why I say that is a lot of the menus, a lot of the buttons and the configuration of it aren't logical in my in my mind. Like, uh, uh, you know, the trash can for clearing your session, I would interpret that you're deleting things, not, you know, wiping your session clean. So maybe icon placement and, and better organization of the display for FT8 uh, could be better. Uh, but 
that's beside the point in a, a separate video altogether. So in terms of the Bluetooth working with the phone, we are receiving um, FT8 signals uh, and it's going really well. So let me put that down for a second because I wanted to talk a little bit about more the exploration between maybe using Bluetooth in a Windows environment. Now I've got a Surface laptop over here and in terms of getting the radio and the Surface laptop to talk to each other, I uh, had no problem discovering the Bluetooth device uh, that currently is discovered on the phone, uh, making sure that I was able to set up audio and send audio uh, or at least receive audio from uh, the Windows side. And the other piece is cat control. Cat control worked really well. However, when it came to transmitting from the Windows device through WSJTX, Man, I ran into a lot of problems. Uh, you know, selecting audio devices wasn't difficult. Uh, it was easy from the menuing system. And um, I won't get into details with that because no matter what, uh, I don't think there is a way to send uh, cat control commands and audio over Bluetooth on a Windows implementation based off the chip because I think it's just a totally different chipset. Um, they don't talk well, or there's just not the capabilities currently built into WSJTX today that will look at that Windows uh, driver uh, or at, at that Bluetooth driver properly. Now, uh, I would love to hear if there are other folks out there that have used this and set this up or have some uh, Bluetooth um, implementation in place, because if I could get my laptop to talk to my FT uh, instance, I would be over the moon. But it's not reliable and there's no way to be able to transmit from WSJTX over Bluetooth to the radio uh, that I was able to find. So basically it pointed me back to FT8CN, which, um, you know, those that have an FX4CR like I myself, uh, FX uh, Bluetooth implementation on that working with this works really, really reliable and really good. So I figured that same experience would be the same uh, with uh, the 891 and this device. Well, um, let me walk you through a quick um, process of connecting uh, and trying to make a contact here. And I'll show you uh, that uh, in a second here. We'll get that set up and then I'll come back at the very end and give you my final thoughts on it. So let's go now fire up a contact and go from there. Okay, so we fired up uh, FT8CN here and we've established a connection. I'm gonna pick a random station here out of the list just to make a connection with, and we're gonna to try to see if we can make contact with them. And so once it gets to its first transmit cycle, uh, we'll see that I popped over to the waterfall and you can get an idea that the radio uh, is actually transmitting uh, over Bluetooth or the FT8 session on the smartphone is transmitting by the reference here in the waterfall. And we're going to fast forward here a little bit through some of the uh, exchange here because it takes a little couple of cycles and we all know FT8's uh, a little bit uh, slow in our fast-paced lives here. So we'll keep going through this procedures here. You'll see I get an R13 and then they finally send me back something uh, as a connection, and then we're now looking for the 7.3. And once we get that 7.3 from the other station, we can pretty much confirm that this is a, a working Bluetooth contact over FT8. So bottom line, what's my take on this device? I'm not sure it's really ready for prime time. If you're a tinkerer by nature in you know, you don't mind uh, trying to get it working. I would say you might want to hold off for a little while until maybe the there there's more players in the market. It has good potential. I might consider in the future maybe picking up a larger Android tablet just to see if I get any more of a benefit with the larger screen and using this. You know, only time will tell. So I'm going to keep testing this and you know, maybe report back in a couple of months on, you know, my take on it. But this this does solve a need. Um, however, 
don't try to get any support for it. Don't try to find the original developer because I have been unable to you know, source any documentation on it or find anything more about the chipset or the Bluetooth implementation or what the best practices are in setting it up. So your mileage may vary. So that's it. You know, hopefully that helped you. Hopefully that answered some of the questions for those folks that might have uh, wanted to pick one of these up and give it a try. If you're brave enough, you know, you still, uh, you know, could be doing Bluetooth uh, over uh, FTHCN, at least for now. But if you're in a Windows world, uh, you may, uh, you know, be waiting for a lot longer uh, for something like this to come about uh, because... I, I think there's a huge gap between chipsets uh, on how this is implemented and how the chipsets that are in Bluetooth uh, Windows devices these days. So with that, uh, hope you enjoyed this. There'll be uh, a bunch of other videos uh, uh, that you might want to check out. Um, and um, with that, 7-3.